Hello and welcome back to SketchUp Assist. Today we're going to do a basic Ruby introduction. Now, if you don't know, Ruby is an interpreted high-level general purpose programming language. Uh, now that's a lot. What does that mean, actually? Uh, well, interpreted means it isn't compiled into machine language prior to runtime. Instead, it is directly executed. And this type of language is often called a scripting language also. Uh, high level means it has strong abstraction from the details of the computer. So in contrast to low level programming languages, um, it uses natural language elements, which are far easier to use compared to machine language. General purpose just means that it can be used in a broad range of domain applications. So it wasn't designed for a very specific, well-focused application. Now, why do you want to use Ruby? Uh, SketchUp has a built-in Ruby terminal and bindings to most of the SketchUp functionality. So instead of clicking through and manually executing steps in the UI to create models, you can use the scripting language uh, features to automate those tasks, allowing you to create complex models by simply running a script. It also allows you to reapply different elements of the Ruby code if properly designed. So you create a uh, Ruby function for uh, designing deck joists, you could reapply that in a number of different applications, for example. So in other words, Ruby will help you automate a lot of tasks in SketchUp. That's the main reason you want to look at it. Now, Ruby isn't a, a SketchUp-specific language. Uh, it is a standalone scripting language that gained most of its popularity in the web development space. And consequently, there are many resources available to help you with general Ruby questions if you run into any roadblocks. So with that, let's get started with some high-level things that you need to know about Ruby. Okay, let's start off by opening the Ruby terminal. So under the window dialog, if you see the Ruby code editor, you can open the Ruby code editor. And we're not really going to use any of the SketchUp uh, bindings today. We're just going to do some, some basic things. And so we'll go through a few, a few key concepts that you'll want to know uh, as we start to get in and, and do a applications of Ruby um, specifically for SketchUp. So let's start with variables. So to create a variable, you're simply going to put the variable name that you want to use, set, use the equal sign, and then set the value. Now, the name of the variable can be pretty much anything you want um, and then the values are generally going to be numbers and so we'll talk about strings in a few moments uh, but you probably end up having some cases where you're going to want to use variable names that make sense um, and so you'll have to kind of figure this out as you go uh, creating variables like x y and z may seem fine and they are in fact fine for some simple applications but as you get into more complex applications, having more descriptive uh, variable names will be very handy. Now, when it comes to using strings, the main thing, the main difference is just going to be that you're going to introduce double quotes. And so um, let's do something. Let's create a variable called channel name. And we will set it equal to SketchUp Assist. Okay. And so now this is now interpreted as a string as opposed to these uh, which are interpreted as numbers. Uh, and then we're going to just look at a couple of methods that exist. So with strings you get some some methods that can be handy. Um, I'm also going to introduce uh, put s and I'm also going to go ahead and open the Ruby terminal here. So under tools in the Ruby editor uh, show Ruby console um, and we'll be able to see some um, some results coming out of here. Um, so put s channel name dot size, for example, and put s dot upcase. Now these are methods, and um, you know not to get too deep into this, but with methods, uh, you basically use the dot operator to call the method on that particular instance of a string, um, and so this the string has sort of by definition when you when you create this string uh, you're basically creating an instance of um, these uh, sets of methods that you can then uh, operate on and you're you're effectively calling then these methods that exist on this string by using these dot operators here uh, and if we run this now uh, you will see it's a little hard there's some 
um, this is just an artifact we'll just ignore this for now um, uh, but you'll see that the the length of the string is 15 and if we come in here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 uh, you'll see that there are in fact 15 characters and then you can see the the result of the upcase so it just um, sets uppercase on all the elements of that string or all the characters of that string okay um, to kind of bounce around we can go back up some of the other things that you can do uh, and we'll go ahead and write these to screen so we can see them you can perform different operations on the uh, on the numerical uh, variables and so this is the value here of summing those up um, obviously multiplication uh, subtraction and division among others but we won't um, go into many more of those um, okay so that's uh, sort of top level things that um, that you can that you'll need to, to know re with regard to variables uh, the main thing is you've got sort of numerical variables and, and string variables that you'll be working with and depending on what you're going to do you need to make a decision on which ones you want to use let's move on to talk about conditionals um, and so you're going to want to you're going to want to write code that can make decisions for you and to do that you're going to need to handle conditionals. so we're going to talk about if else statements at this point um, and uh, we have a couple of variables set here. We'll just keep those and use them. Um, but let's see what happens. So if, if I want, for example, to do something, if this value is, let's say, equal to 25, or it could be greater than 25, less than 25, uh, it could be pretty much anything. Let's just go ahead and, and look at the case where we say if that, if that variable is equal to uh, 25, let's do something special. Okay, and to do that, we simply come in and say if x equals 25. And again, this is sort of that natural language uh, element that we discussed in the intro regarding high-level programming uh, so it's pretty easy to interpret uh, we can perform some action here and we're just gonna write the screen for now uh, but it could be it could be anything um, let's just say X is equal to 25 and then we're gonna end that statement okay and we can come in here and run this and we see here that in fact we executed our statement um, x was in fact equal to 25 obviously if we change this and we rerun it we're not going to get that response again it's a little hard to see here because of the nil but um, but we don't get that um, so that's okay but there are going to be cases where i'm kind of like well i if, if it's not equal to 25, then I want to potentially do something else. Uh, and that's where, um, as you might guess, the else function comes in. And so uh, let's come down here. And we can do this uh, by simply coming in and saying x is not equal to 25. Okay. Now when we rerun this again, we will see here that we get our response out that we, that we expected to see. Okay, um, what about if we want to get a little more sophisticated? What if we want to see if x is 25 and y is 10? Then we introduce the AND operator, um, and that is simply two of those ampersands. Oops, and you got to get the case sensitivity right here. Again, equal to 10. Okay. Um, and we could update this if we want. And y equals 10. Now this obviously gets a little more sophisticated or a little more complicated because you know while one of these may be false um, the other could be true but we're gonna kinda gloss over that for now. Um, in fact let's let's totally gloss over and just say uh, didn't criteria because we could technically we could be um, not making completely true statements here so we could just do something like this uh, 
Okay, and now we know that actually we're, we're not going to meet our criteria because that value is set. Um, and so, in fact, this is the message we get. And again, if we come back and we set these equal to 25, um, then we'll see that we did, in fact, meet our criteria. Okay, now there could be cases where you don't necessarily want both of these. You want either or. And, and in that case, we introduce the or operator. Okay. And now if we run this, we're going to meet our criteria, of course, because we've, we have them both equal. Okay. But if we come back in here and change this, and we run this one more time, uh, we'll see we still met our criteria, right? Because all we said is that we want either x equal to 25 or y equal to 10. And while x is not equal to 25, y was equal to 10. So we've satisfied our criteria. Okay. Um, and so that's, uh, that's most of the conditional stuff that you'll need to know um, as you get in and start writing sort of more complicated scripts to do, um, uh, to do um, some of your SketchUp projects. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is look at repetitive behavior. Um, so if you have tasks that you want to perform over and over, uh, obviously you don't want to you know, write that task over and over, or cut and paste it over and over. You want to use um, loops to do that. So let's talk about looping. Uh, and we're really just going to look at the two most popular. Uh, we're going to look at while loops and for loops. Uh, so let's start off with the with a while while loop. Let's let's just set some sort of value here that we're going to use, uh, and we're going to say while x equals twenty five. Let's uh, let's do something here. Let's. Um, Let's just say we're in the loop, and let's go ahead and break this loop. And we'll look at some more, slightly more sophisticated approaches here in just a moment. But just to just to convey this, okay. So we're gonna set our value equal to twenty-five, um, and we're gonna say while that value remains uh, equal to twenty-five, and actually we wanna to two. Yeah, don't make that mistake. Make sure you put uh, this is like a conditional, so you're checking to see if x is equal to 25. So if x is equal to 25, in this case while x is equal to 25, uh, we're going to just print uh, to the screen a simple message. And then we're going to go ahead and short circuit this thing immediately after one step. And so let's, let's run that. OK, and so we'll see in our Ruby console that, in fact, we were in the loop here. Uh, one of the things that you can do uh, to make this a little more interesting um, is let's start this a little lower and we'll actually flip this around. Let's say while x is less than 25. Um, and we're going to add one to this each time. So while x is less than 25, we're going to stay in the loop. Uh, each time through the loop, we're also going to perform this operation to increase x by 1. We're going to start off with 20. And so let's run this. And so here you can see uh, we run through that multiple times. If you're actually interested, you could also come in here and put X in, uh, and print that to the screen just so you kind of see. Oops. Try that one more time. There we go. Um, and so you can see the first time through it's equal to 20, 21, and so on until we hit 24. Of course, when we hit 24 here, when we add uh, one more to it, that's the last time we come to the loop because when we come back around to do that check, of course, we're now going to be equal to 25 and the condition is uh, requesting that we're less than 25. Okay, uh, so that's that's the while loop. And now let's look at the for loop and we're also going to introduce one more thing. We're going to introduce um, some arrays here. So let's say we'll just do um, a three part array here. And we're going to say for um, val and x. OK. And so val, val is a, let's go ahead and call it value just to maybe make it more clear, or element for element and x. OK, so for each of these elements that make up x, we're going to perform something, some operation. Uh, we'll leave this in here, and we'll leave this here, but we have to change it slightly, okay? Because, well, let's first let's look at what would happen if we put x, okay? So just to keep in mind, x is not the value that we're actually 
moving across. So let's take a quick look at what happens here. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so you can see that each time we're in the loop, we're, we're basically printing all of the values of, of x. Okay, that's not, generally speaking, that's not going to be what you want to do. You're going to want to look at the, the element. So, so for each element in x, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to look at the element that I have. Okay. Okay, so now you can see the first time through I'm pulling the 20. All right, the second time through I'm pulling the 21 and so on. Uh, now keep in mind, this could be anything. I could call this value in x. I just need to change it here. This is just a variable that I'm creating to represent that element of x that I, that I have currently effectively pulled out of that array. Um, and so you'll see this, for example, as we get into SketchUp and you start pulling in a list of entities, you can iterate across those entities. So instead of iter iterating across the x values, you would iterate across the entities that we pulled back from some of the commands as, as we get into SketchUp. We'll start looking at things like that. So this one's going to be a, a, a valuable tool for you to use or a valuable uh, functionality for you to, to have at your disposal. Uh, okay, we're going to stop there. Uh, these are sort of the basics that you need to know. We'll use these as we get into more Ruby tutorials specifically for SketchUp and start talking about how to do uh, automated tasks in SketchUp. Uh, so for now, that's all. Uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, found it useful, please subscribe. Thank you.